Hey everyone, and welcome back for week four of our flooded study. Nikki, another week with you. How lucky so are we? Fun. How lucky am I? <laughs> you're right. You're right. We're pretty great. Um, and so before we get started today, I do have fun, some fun questions. I okay. would love to ask you. I love you. fun questions. Okay. The last one might not be as fun, but okay. we'll work our way up. Okay. okay. So number one, like Noah, he got into a boat and he traveled somewhere, right? So if you could take a boat anywhere, where would you want to go? Hmm. What was the ark for Noah, not a boat? Oh, yeah, whoops. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> See, everyone, you can do whatever you, you can. The theological level that you can be at is really across the board. It's okay. Here. I'm just teasing. Um, okay, so my husband is always talking about doing this, but I think I would want to go somewhere like Belize. Ooh. So maybe head down to Florida and hop in a boat. Okay, and that sounds fun. That journey. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Uh, number two, do you have a favorite barnyard baby? Because you have a farm, you have a lot of animals. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite? You know, that's kind of like asking who your favorite child is, which let's just all confess as moms, some days we do have favorites. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on the situation. But I would say if I had to pick one, it would be our newest horse that we have. His name is, this is funny, that a Bible teacher has a horse named Tennessee Whiskey. Um, Is that who you write about in the book? Yeah. Uh, No, 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 no. That's Story, the other horse. Story. Sorry. Okay. Um, So, yeah, he, Tennessee came to us and he was very underweight and just had a lot of problems. And so I've worked really hard with him. And so I think I'm the most proud of him. Like He's he's like your comeback story. Yes, he's the comeback of the Fixer for Farms. We love that. All right, number three, lesson you learned during the pandemic. And you might be still learning it because we're still currently in a pandemic. So, Mm. you know, okay, I would say there's two. So the first one, my family eats a lot of food. Okay, that's good to know. That's really I mean, good to know. when we were in lockdown, like, I just could not keep groceries in our house. <laughs> um, so that's just kind of like a silly one. But the second one was really just to hold um, hold plans loosely, okay. um, you know, especially in ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of events shut down, and yeah. uh, I had to change gears really quickly. Um, so it's been that's been a really hard lesson, but I've still seen God move and do incredible things through online ministry like what we're doing here oh. today. Um, so, yeah. That's neat. All right. And then last but not least, what's your go-to Bible verse when you don't know what to pray or you're in a hard spot? Yeah. Well, I really love the book of Proverbs for wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, I go to that like when I'm I'm really seeking out something. But one of my favorite passages is Ecclesiastes 3. And Mm -hmm. it's just about remembering that there's a season and time for everything in life. Um, Because sometimes when we're going through hard things, we just think that it's never going to end. But it's a season and it will come and it will go. But God's faithfulness will stay the same. And you mentioned the word remember. And that ties beautifully into decision four that we'll be reading about this week, which is to remember who is in charge, Mm -hmm. which is a good thing to do. And so this week we have a doubt diary by one of my good friends. Her name is Megan, and I'm excited for you guys to get to know her a little bit and get to know the doubt that she struggles with. And so let's take a look. Hey y'all, I'm Megan with Proverbs 31, and a doubt that I've really struggled with recently is, does God really care about me? So at the end of 2019, I made this big decision to move from my hometown in Florida, being near friends and family, to North Carolina, where I knew no one. And then a global pandemic happened. So I felt really confused and alone and a little bit lost because I wondered why God would have me move away from such solid community and my family if he knew it was going to be so much harder to meet people. I want to stay obedient and be hopeful, but sometimes it kind of feels like he's abandoned me. So what are some truths for when he feels especially distant or like he's left me hanging? All right, Nikki. So what would you say to Megan as she's in her hard spot? Yeah. Well, Megan, first of all, you're not alone. (laughs) There's a lot of people who can identify with feeling that way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of heard Ashley talk about this a little bit last week Mm -hmm. about feeling like, you know, does God really remember me? Does God know what I'm walking through? Um, And so here's, here's the beautiful thing. In Noah's account in the scriptures, we see that he walks through this really hard assignment, mm-hmm. right? He accepts it and he decides that he is going to be obedient no matter what. Okay, so then he gets into the ark and then God does, we talked about this in our teaching videos. Hopefully you watched them by now. But we talked about how God did the hardest part. He shut the door. Yes. And so Noah is in the ark. Now, what's so funny is you asked me what my greatest lesson during the pandemic is. Mm -hmm. Noah was like the first one ever quarantined, right? Like that's a great point. He was called to a stay on the ark order by God. (laughs) I mean, that's a whole nother level of quarantine. Okay. But as he's on there, God gives no type of instructions about how long it's going to be. Oh, I would not like that. 
Um, I teach you about, you know, it being an arc, not a boat, because an arc doesn't have any type of steering mechanism. So a boat, you know, you can tell oh. it where to go. Okay. But an arc, I mean, they're just floating there. They had no idea where God was taking them. And they had no idea when this was going to be over, kind of like how we feel right now right. in this pandemic. Right. When is this going to be over? But eventually we get to this point in Genesis chapter 8, and this is probably my favorite verse in this whole account of Noah. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 1, it says, But God remembered Noah. Now, I talk about this in the book this week that um, I actually watched a video from an atheist who uses this verse to say, like to be against Christianity, Mm. to say, well, how could God put them in the ark and just forget about them for all that time? Well, if we were to read it just like it is, I could understand why someone could say something like that. But you and I both know, because we've been studying the scriptures for just a little bit, um, that sometimes we need to go back and look at the original meaning of that word. Mm -hmm. So the original meaning of this word remembered actually means to take action. Mm -hmm. So it's just like when, uh, you know, if you have a birthday or a wedding coming up, you know that it's coming up, but there's nothing really to do. I mean, for a wedding there is, (laughs) but you know, the day the wedding comes, that's the day you put on the dress, you do your makeup, you walk down the Mm -hmm. aisle. And it's not that you forgot about that day. It's just that there was time to act. Right. There was nothing to do. So up until this point, there was nothing for God to do. And so as Noah is in this ark, though, can you imagine uh, what that was like for him to sit there and wonder, like, God, hello? I think of his family, like um, his sons and whatnot, coming to him and be like, when is this going to be done? And he doesn't yes. have answers. He you doesn't know? have answers. Wait. He doesn't. And so I think sometimes, you know, when we're walking through really hard, lonely seasons, mm-hmm. it is very easy, like Megan said, to feel like maybe God has forgotten what we're going through. Yeah. But this word remembered, when I realized that it means to take action, and it actually means that throughout the scriptures when we study it, anytime we see that that God remembered something, it was because God was mm-hmm. getting ready to act on the behalf of somebody. And so today, I just want to say this to all of our friends joining in this study. God has not forgotten you, mm-hmm. and God is not overlooking your situation. It's just not time for him to do what he's going to do through this situation. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get really impatient. Oh, yeah. I like control. I like to make things happen. Yes. And so, yeah. And impatient. I like to tell God, this is what I think you need to do today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so true. And it's just not how God works. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, as we make this decision to um, remember who is in charge, you know, there's this this phrase that you're going to hear this week throughout your study and through the videos is that God's in charge of the plan, Mm. but I'm in control of my obedience. And so had Noah opened up that window and sent those birds out any sooner, who knows what would have happened? If they would have opened up the door to the ark and went out, who knows what would have happened? Right. But they remembered that God was in charge of the plan and they were in control of their obedience. And that really does help us in seasons where we feel like God may have forgotten us. He hasn't. It's just not time for him to move. One of my favorite things about you, Nikki, is you're able to take a story of the Bible that may be familiar for you or you may have never heard it before, but you make it come alive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited for us to look into the life of Noah a little bit more this week, week four. We get to look at the decision to remember who is in charge and we get to do it from learning from you and learning from scripture. So week four is getting ready to begin. Thank you so much for joining us. And like we say, when you know the truth and live the truth, it changes everything. We'll see you next week.